bow our heads to pray together today. Jesus, you are the Lord of heaven, earth, in between, everything around us. And we come today not just because of what day it is, but we come because we want to come and thank you for another week, no matter what has happened. Uh, a lot of things I'm sure that we didn't plan or see coming, uh, good and bad, but we're thankful that you're still the Almighty no matter what. And so we come on this day not to get a thrill, not to do our thing, but to come and let you get praise from everything that we do, even in our fellowship and learning and uh, definitely in our worship. We want you to know that we love you and we praise you and we serve you and we want to honor you with our lives. And so uh, coming today helps us get set for another week and only you know what's going to happen. And so we need our hand in your big hand even stronger today more than ever. And so we pray for that. And all around us, God, are, are things that get our attention. There's sickness, there's um, there's decision times that, that people are in, there's valleys people are walking, there's things happening, and you're the God of all of that. The reason we say that you're the Lord of heaven and earth means you're the God of everything. And so we just lay everything at your feet. We worship you today. We ask you to speak to our hearts as well as we worship that we can grow even a little bit while we're here and then go out into the world this week and be better for you. And if there's one here today that has not made that decision yet to serve you completely, I pray that would happen even while we're here in their hearts today. We pray and thank you for all things in Jesus' name and amen. Two weeks ago, can you remember what we talked about two weeks ago? Last week we had uh, Beulah here, so what we, Lucy? Do you remember what we talked about two? Oh, you said you're kidding. I'm sorry. I thought she was going to tell me, Tammy, what it was. Um, the Beat, did somebody say Beatitudes? Who said them back there? Where? You get an A for the day. I'm taking, Dan Bunny's taking you out to lunch today for knowing that answer. Thank you, Dan, wherever Dan went. Yeah, there he is. Um, but today we're going to finish that up. We started, and we're going to also review, because if you're like me, I forgot what I did 20 minutes ago, let alone two weeks ago, right? Mike, are you with me on that? Uh, so, especially I hit my head this week. I'm not sure what my name is, so I'm not sure. Um, two weeks ago, we started talking about it, and Jesus, remember, he was starting to uh, teach them, and there was such a crowd that the reason this is called Sermon on the Mount is because he had to climb the mountain where it was behind him so he could get a better perspective of the people instead of being on par with them because the crowd was so great. Wouldn't it be wonderful that so many people would want to show up to hear what Jesus said that you'd have to elevate where you were to make sure the whole crowd could hear you? This is before they had the cool stuff we can strap to our heads and hang on and sing out of. He had to make sure, and he's Jesus, so I'm pretty sure he knows how to make his voice project across the elements. At the same time, he wanted to make sure they got what he was saying. So he was up in a different perspective. The first one, we reviewed these. The first one uh, was, what was it? You remember? Be humble, right? How many of you are humble? There's the humble test right there. Raise your hand if you think you're humble. If you raise your hand probably got it right that's what we said you have a problem so be humble that's not always easy especially if you know how to do something or especially if you have some confidence we're not saying be a doormat but humility is a great quality and it's lacking at times but we sure need it amen so you can amen that that's okay amen be compassionate he says blessed are they that mourn for they'll be comforted and i took from that that not just, I don't want you to be sad. There are times that we mourn. But at the same time, be compassionate to those who are mourning as well. A lot of times I, I, I have to miss my cue at times when I know, okay, do I, do I just be comforting here? Or do I try to break the mood? Or do I try to, you know, Brittany, it's tough to know that. And I think if you're compassionate, God will give you the words to say. Amen? Then the third one was, be gentle in verse 5. Uh, the same chapter here in verse 5, he says, blessed are the meek. They inherit the earth, Janet, you know, the meek, be gentle, be meek. You don't have to always come in, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what this is? I'm hurting my hand really, really bad right now. Come blaring in all the time. There are times when a meek touch, some gentleness is okay. And so he's given us the list. The next one, he says, constantly seek the Lord. He said in verse six, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after what? You said it. Righteousness. Always be seeking God. Always be seeking to hear from Him. To see where He's at. To be close to Him so you hear His voice for direction and for 
all the other things. And if we're constantly seeking him, the other ones above that are going to happen. And then we stopped at, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. In other words, if you forgive, people will forgive you as well. If you're a forgiver, if you have a forgiving spirit. Those are good. And I know all of those, since it's been two weeks, you've mastered every one of them, right? Raise your hand and say, woo ya," right? Of course not. And hopefully by the time we're done today, you're going to realize you don't have to carry a checklist around and, and be mindful of today. Oh, man, I messed up today. I wasn't quite as kind as I was supposed to be. I messed up today. I might not have been as humble as I was. Jesus shows us a better way to put those into perspective, okay? So we move on now uh, into verse 8 from chapter 5 because now he's trying to show us another grouping of just three today that we'll look at if you're keeping track of, of uh, things there at your seat. In verse 8, he says something that I think we have to remember in a lot of ways. When you see this one, you can't just brand it right off the bat. As he finishes up, when he tells us last week, uh, Bob, that we need to forgive. Now he says, blessed are the what? Who do the pure in heart get to see? That's pretty good. I don't know if it means that they see God on earth I don't know if it means, there's a whole lot of, you can read study notes and commentaries and figure that out all you want. I don't know, we were saying see God. Number one, if you look at it for things from a child's perspective, life is pretty cool. That's why I love when we see the videos of the kids doing their thing in whatever manner they're doing it in. When they're having fun in Bible school, when they're having fun in junior church, when they're having fun on a picnic, whatever they're doing. If you ask a kid what's going on, they are not going to tell you their aches and pains and their bills and, you know, the car's not working right, and my neighbor's really been mowing across my, my survey line, and, you know, this and that. They don't really care. They're like, hey, you, you go find a kid covered in mud, panting really hard, who's had a great day playing outside, you know, and you ask them, hey, how's your day going? It's awesome! Their eyes are this big, and they can't see, but they're covered in mud, and mom's not going to be real happy, but they're having a great day. You know why? I'm covered in mud. I'm having a great time. And, you know, I think at times if we could see life through the eyes of kids and just keep it simple and just be pure, pure, when you think of pure, here's what he says. We, he wants us to pursue purity in everything that we do. So that's the first one today. Pursue it. Go after it. Now, there's a lot of ways to do that. I am not the purity police, and I'm not here to give you the list. I am not a list guy. The only list I make up is when my wife sends me to wear Bless your hearts. Did you hear that? We welcome the Williamses with us today. That Meyer is my, that's our inside joke. I am there how often? We don't know how often because I live there, I think. I got another Meyer story this week, but I can't tell it. But it's a good one. So, you love it. I may tell you privately one day, but I, I haven't even told my family that one yet. But it's awesome. So, purity becomes something that we look at in not a list to say, okay, you know, I haven't looked at anything wrong today. I haven't thought anything wrong. I haven't said anything. Mike, you know, when you start going down the list, when you start checking off a checklist, you start thinking you're pretty good. We're not keeping score here, Ron. Amen? It's a pure mindset. Danny, if I pray every day, God, help keep me clean from the things of the world. Now, that's a broad statement, Kevin. At the same time, it's a pursuit in my heart to say, let me keep things on the level they need to be on in my relationships, in my, in my alone time, in the way I carry myself. Are you with me? Just like a kid. Now, you're going to say, well, kids lose their temper. Kids are messy. Hello. Do we have any messy, hot-headed adults in this room this morning? Thank you. for Greg, bless your heart, man. You're honest, right? Good job. Right? Are you kidding we had this discussion at home all the time about trying to keep as, as together and clean as we can. It's difficult for me to stay on Connor about his room when around my chair in the corner, you could tell him what's around my chair in the corner. Every man has his chair. Every man that's got his chair in the house, raise your hand. Come on. It's all right. Your wife knows it. You don't have to go, is she looking? She lives with you. I go in spurts, Kathy, at times. I keep the area around my chair pretty good. But for some reason this week, I've got a stack of books and then notebooks, and then there's a blanket. Don't judge me, okay? I have a blanket. And then I've got, you know, I may have a coffee cup and a water bottle or whatever, and it's all around there. And every time I walk by Connor's room, Madeline, and look at him and go, I wish you'd clean. And I put a hand in my mouth. I'm like, man, as soon as he walks in there, he's going to see around my chair, right? 
So before I can tell you to get your act together, I'd better have my act together. Amen? Nothing drives me crazier and makes me want to actually spit fire than to realize that, you know, I'm never going to be perfect, but before I can leave my family, before I can even get up in front of you, before I can do anything for God, I better make sure, Jim, that I've got my act together. That does not mean I'm perfect, but that does mean, that's why I love that word pursue. I'm in pursuit of it. I'm in pursuit of Jesus every day. I'm in pursuit of the Holy Spirit's call in my life. I'm in pursuit of feeling, Clarinda, like God is in charge of everything every day. And pure, pursuit of purity. He says the pure in heart. It means I take people at face value. I don't have a hidden agenda, right? So if I tell you that, hey, Rodney, I love you and I'm praying for you, I'm not trying to do that for any other reason than to let you know that you're, we're brothers and I love you. Amen? You and Janet are like a mile apart today. Maybe I should be doing marriage counseling for the Normans this week. <laughs> so, in our lives today, here's our problem. We want to go after the right things. I can guarantee you this. Church, if you, and the blessing in this, Gordon comes out to say, they shall see God. My hope is that we see God in everything, but at the same time, eventually, one of these days, when this old life is over, we get to see God. That's a great promise. That's a great thing to me to hang my hat on and to know. He says, you're blessed. Not only are you blessed, when you see that word blessed all throughout the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. It, you know what blessed means? If you look it up in how, how the, the definition of it and how it's translated through in the Greek, it means happy. Happy are you. If you try these, happy are you if you try all the things he said. Happy are you if you pursue after this. So now he's telling us here, you'll be happy. How many of you are truly happy on the inside? I will never have true happiness until I am seeking after God in everything. And forgiving. We talked about a lot of hard ones last week. Today, staying pure. The very first battleground that Satan fights, Gina, is in the mind. The very first place everything begins is right in the mind. You with me? The things I do don't just happen. You know, my, my kids want me to believe that, especially my son. Oh, Dad, I don't know why I did it. I just did it. It's trying to be funny. It just kind of falls out of me. It all starts right up here. And church, let me just say, as, as narrow as I can, if you don't guard your mind and your heart, Brian, the way that we should with the Holy Spirit's call, we are not going to be as pure as we need to be in all things of life. Amen? Listen, it's tough enough. When the Holy Spirit is guarding your heart and your mind. It's tough enough when you see all the stuff that's around you. And all the things we get bombarded with. But it is possible to stay pure. Jesus would not have said, blessed are the pure in heart. It comes down to a heart thing. At the core of who I am. If I'm trying to be honest. If I'm trying to be pure. If I'm giving it my all. You know what the great thing is? God is not saying, hey, go after it and I'm grading you. If you fail, then you're done. No. He says, if you go after it, I'll help you. If you want to live a life that's pleasing to me and you've got good motives and you stay pure in heart, in mind, in words, in your deeds, it'll all come out, but it all begins in your mind. If you think I'm wrong, what are you thinking about right now? It's 1140. Has your stomach growled yet? Right? When it begins and it growls, some of mine was growling before I left the house. Are you kidding me? It's growling. So we know we're thinking stomach growls. It sends a message. You know, Alex, I don't pretend to know anything about the body whatsoever, but I'm going to say this much. To your brain that says, anybody ever see Little House, Little Shop of Horrors? Remember that movie? And the big plant that's like that. What did he say? When the plant, do not look at me like that. You know what I'm talking about. Feed me. Remember? The big plant. It's a black and white movie, kids. I know you don't understand what black and white movies are, but they came out before colored movies did. And... This plant saying, feed me. When that starts in here, it shoots a message up to here, Jim, that says, what? Say it. You unpure bunch of hungry people in here today. <laughs> How dare you? Feed me. And so you start thinking. And then the preacher's voice gets quieter and quieter. And the growling gets louder and louder. And the brain starts. And in the brain, you start having all kinds of thoughts about, what are we going to have for lunch today? My uncle, who I love with all my heart, one of my greatest influences in my life would ask my aunt every morning what are we having for dinner he wasn't talking breakfast he wasn't talking lunch but kevin he would ask what are we having for supper he meant the night meal 
And she would look at him, and she started getting angry, man. She's like, why? He goes, so I can have it set in my mind so I won't be disappointed today when I come in for dinner. So I know what we're having. (laughs) And you guys wonder where my food gene comes from. That's my mom's brother. So he would think about that. I talked to him the other day. He's, he's really having a hard time with Parkinson's, and I want you to pray. He's had a surgery, and he's really having a hard time with a lot of things, with memory and with his, his control of his body. And I asked him, I said, I called him Doc. I said, you still getting up in the morning and want to know what's for supper? He goes, are you kidding? They can saw in my brain with them electrodes all they want for this neurology thing, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> so at his core, he wants to know what's going on. And to keep his thoughts pure, you don't have to worry about what he's thinking. You know we're pursuing that. We pursue what God thinks. We pursue what he wants. Are you with me? We're not trying to be like anybody else but him. And he says, you are happy. You are blessed if your pursuit is after the pure things of God. Amen? Two weeks ago, I made you raise your hand after every beatitude and say, I promise. I'm not doing that today. These get even a little bit deeper, but I want you in your mind or in your heart, maybe just for a few seconds, even while the sermon continues, just to pray and ask God, God, I don't want to be shady. You know, Brittany, I don't want to be what I'm not. I don't want to pretend to be something that's not going on on the inside. So God, wash away anything out of my heart and out of my mind that doesn't belong there so I can pursue this kind of purity and have a peaceful life. Amen? Speaking of peace, we move on now and we say, Blessed are the who? For they shall be called the sons of God. So now we pursue and promote peace. When you think of a peacemaker, what are you thinking? Stands at somebody who walks around going, oh, now don't say anything that's going to make anybody upset. Now just chill out. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. Hey, now, Mike. You think of a peacemaker, you think Mike Strum. Can I get an amen for that? Don't you? And I'm going to... Pardon me. I'm going to think of someone who's calm, who's cool, who's collected, rip a guitar in half and burn it and smash it and still keep playing it. He could play it if it wasn't there and make it sound good. Amen? But someone who's, who's really calm and can see both sides of an issue and pray and see what God wants them to do. Amen? It's a good, don't, he's sitting right here. Amen that louder than that. And so when I say promote peace, he says, Eric, you're a peacemaker. I have had to learn this one the hard way because my idea of a peacemaker was make sure everybody's happy and do not let one side know that they have an issue with the other side because if they meet and find out, we got a big problem, right? Is that a peacemaker or is that somebody in the middle running themselves ragged going to end up wearing themselves out? In the, yeah, yeah, whatever, Mike, thank you very much. In pursuit of promoting peace, Let me say this as gentle as I can without making you think you can just start saying whatever you want. (laughs) We have to sometimes resolve conflict, Pat, for peace. Amen? We have to sometimes deal with the undercurrent of things that are going on in our lives or community, uh, families, church, whatever. We won't have peace if we just continue to hide everything that's happening. There are times we have to deal with that. But you got to deal with it in a loving way. The Bible talks about speaking the truth in love. I can't just spout what I think all the time, Chris, without making sure that I've got Bible to back up what I think, without doing it in a loving way. If Chris has an issue with me, the Bible tells us, you sit down one-on-one with a brother, and you tell them, hey, I had this issue with you, and it's really bothering me, and we need to work on that. If I resist and tell him, get lost, I don't want anything to do with that, I like what I'm doing, you're going to have to just uh, uh, adjust Then he can bring somebody back with him and say, okay, we're serious. We need a witness. And I'm not trying to say the Bible doesn't know what they're talking about, but there are times I'd bring the witness first, Dan, before I do that the second time. Amen? And if that doesn't work, it gets even huffer. But when you look at peace, peace is not avoiding what's going on around us. Peace is handling it the right way. Does that make sense? And Jesus does not call us to always just look the other way. And act like nothing's going on, Carol. When he talks about being a peacemaker, it means, Tammy, someone who is strong enough, faithful enough to be trusted that we can handle all situations but still come out with a good result. Amen? There could still be a side that's not happy. Any parent that's got more than one kid, any parent with one kid, let alone more than one. 
knows that there is never going to be a resolution where we're all, and I got this wrong the other week, and I'm going to say it right today. It was Merle Haggard, not Merle Travis. There is no Merle. Well, there might be a Merle Travis somewhere, but Merle Haggard, the drinking the free bubble up and eating rainbow stew. Anybody remember that song? We don't always all end up doing that. But if we've got it worked out to where we know we've reached an accord and we can live with that, I think our country and our world would get along a lot better if we all just sat down and listened in love and shared where we're coming from and prayed. Amen? And prayed. Jason, if you and I have issues, we don't. Bless God. You don't want issues with Jason. The arsenal he's got in his house. Are you kidding? We need to sit down and pray and talk it over. Right? Peace. Peace. Remember in the 60s, the sign for peace? What was it? Remember that? Yep. You put it in there. And you got the pat. Anybody ever have the patches with the two finger sign on there? My mother, God love her. You know, we weren't allowed to do anything. Chocolate milk was a sin. But we had a, uh, back in those days, it was a sign for that. Mom's like, none of you guys can get that patch or that sign. I want to see it on anything. Well, that wasn't a shock. We couldn't have anything anyway. But she said, I go, Mom, what's the deal? It's about peace. She goes, no, it's a terrible sign. It's because she saw a guy that she didn't like that had the patch on. I didn't find that out for a while. And I'm not a challenger. I'm like, Mom said it. I agree with it. That settles it right there. Kind of like how I am with God, you know. And so one day, my dad found that out. Dad, my, dad, my dad, and I never found this out until uh, much later in life. He said, I didn't always agree with Mom, but it's Mom. What am I going to do, you know? He said, I agree with her. For pe- What's he trying to do? He goes, I was trying to promote peace. We found that out, and so later, my brother, when he got a little bit older, he got a little bit more uppity and thought he could challenge the system a little bit more, and we're talking about, it came up, he found out why mom didn't like that patch, and so he decided, and every time he opened his mouth, he just braced yourself anyway. You think I'm bad. He's 10 times worse, and he starts talking. He goes, yeah, but mom, isn't there a bigger problem with you than the patch if you don't like it because he's got it on? We didn't see him for about two weeks after that. (laughs) But he was right, you know. There's a bigger issue here, Mom. You and your, you know, it's a hard thing. And, and the peace part, it's not a symbol. And, and, and God help us today, it's not just some cause. There are so many causes that a lot of people get behind. I wonder if they really know what the cause is really all about. I love everybody, don't you? I don't hear anybody agreeing to that. I love everybody, don't you? Everybody. I don't care if you dropped out of a plane from Mars. I love you. I don't care your background. I don't care your mistakes. I don't care your goals. I don't care where you come from. And I think our world needs a good dose of loving people who just want peace to say, you be who God made you to be. Can I get an amen for that? And I believe if we did that and we put God at the center of that. Do you remember the young king who was put in charge when he was very, very, very young? In his 30s, actually, uh, in comparison to uh, all the older kings in the Bible in the, in the Old Testament. And he was put in charge, and he realized that the Ark of the Covenant, the very thing that drew them to God, Mike, was found. If, for lack of a better term, they were spring cleaning uh, the quarters, the king's quarters, and they found things laying around that needed to be prominent again. And he said, how are we going to call ourselves a godly group of people without having the things that draw us to God at the center? And so he took the Ark of the Covenant out, the very thing that drew them to God, Jim, and he had it placed prominently once again out in the open for people to see that we do serve the Lord. We are godly people. We do consult him and go to him for everything. And he put it out at the middle again for such a young king who didn't go to all the training, all the big shots did. He had it in the heart to do it right. And that's what we need to do with our lives, our country. Continue in our church, in your homes. Get out in the open the things that represent God and let people know we're for peace. Amen? We're not rebel rousers. Now, if you listen to our softball team on the sidelines, you think that we were the loudest rebel rousers that ever lived. But nobody has more fun losing 60 to 3. Amen? (laughs) Amen? Maybe two. I don't know what we scored. I'm sitting next to the bookkeeper lady, Krista, who's supposed to be keeping score. I looked at her at one moment in time. I said, what's the score anyway? She goes, I have no idea. (laughs) This one's over. Yeah, we just, I just sat there and waited for him to shake hands at the end. Okay, it's over. Let's go. You know, but nobody laughs more. Nobody has a better time. Isn't that what it's about? 
Losers always say that, I guess, but it's the truth. <laughs> we have fun. But it's peaceable. There may have been some blown calls. We may have been safe every time they called us out. We don't care because we're having a good time. If we're not full of ourselves, we're a lot more peaceable. Amen? And so he says, you're blessed, you're happy if you're a peacemaker. Work on being a peacemaker. And the last one comes to this, and this should not be a huge surprise. 10 through 12 says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you see the end result of so many of these? You get to see God. The kingdom of heaven is yours. You're called a child of his. Those are great results. Verse 11 says, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. What happens to them? Well, you shouldn't be surprised. You know why? Because he goes on to say in verse 12, and blessed are you when you rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, nobody's, I'm not any better than anybody else. I'm not any better than all the, the disciples and the apostles and uh, the people that served God in the Bible times and even the people now in foreign countries. Right now, somewhere, Ella, there is somebody suffering for their faith. Not me. I'm not suffering. I mean, I look like I'm suffering, but I'm not. I'm having a great time. Are you? Anybody enjoying serving God? Woo-hoo! Are you kidding me? And yet I know that if I get in Satan's way, that I should expect some kind of persecution of some kind. What does that mean? He says, you're blessed. Go back and read that again. He said, blessed are you when others revile you. You know what getting reviled means? It's not a revival, but you're getting stirred up. That's a Kentucky term. I used to hear him say it down there all the time. I got so riled up, they called it. Riled up means, you know, it's like watching a cat with his feathers, or feathers, his fur. <laughs> I hit my head, I'm telling you. Cats fly now. It's like watching a cat with his fur and his back all arched up, getting ready to pounce, right? Don't revile me up, Leslie. And Mike's probably said that. Don't you rile me up, you know, getting riled up. It means... Others are going to come along. If you're in Satan's way, there's a target on you. Don't say that. Oh, my goodness. You know, I used to hear that when I first preached. Don't preach that you need to pray for patience, Alex. Don't do that because the Bible says tribulation works patience. And if you pray for patience, that means bad things are going to happen to make you be patient. And they're all scared. And they say, don't, don't say this stuff about getting in Satan's way. He's the devil. And if you say you know, you're going to get in his way and make his life torturous, then you're just asking for trouble. I'm asking for trouble when I sign up to serve Jesus in the first place. I don't have to tell him that I'm in his way. I need to get in his way. If I'm spending most of my time telling him I'm in his way, I'm probably trying to convince myself of that. But I need to be about the business of God if I'm in the middle. What does that mean? That means you're not falling for his junk. That means you're not living a life of two sides and living one way, one way, and one way, the other. That means you're not trying to use the church for your own advantage. That means you're not trying to serve God simply as an out clause just for fun. Am I getting somewhere with you this morning? It means you're serving Jesus with an honest heart. You really got the blood applied to your life, Lucy, and you know you're going to heaven when you die. And you're trying your best to live. You're in his way. He cannot stand harmony. He cannot stand... uh, families that love each other. He cannot stand well-behaved kids taught about Jesus. He cannot stand a church that loves each other and worships. Doesn't care if they get out at one o'clock. That wasn't a joke. I don't know what you're all laughing at. He loved, he hates laughter, by the way. Do you know that? He doesn't like it when we're happy. Does he? You know, Roxanne, do you think Satan likes it when we're happy? Are you kidding? He can't stand it. We've made him mad around here so often, he's probably ready to blow. Good! But there's persecution coming. In what kind of form? It comes in all kinds of forms. It can be your automobile. Has anybody ever had a car break down just at the right time? You know? Or have a wheel come off just at the right? Hey, or maybe you'll have something at work come along just at the, ooh, that could not have been any better timing. Praise the Lord. Or a physical situation or finances or relationships or words. Has anybody heard words that really, really, really hurt them? I can stand here and say sticks and stones may break my bones all I want, but names do hurt. Accusations do hurt. 
Stuff that you can't hear. How can things I don't hear, Tracy, hurt? It's because they come around on the wheel through somebody else. It works. I cannot tell you what kind of persecution to expect. But Jesus himself said, hey, Ron, you are blessed when things happen. That means you're in Satan's way. And all he's trying to do is steal the smile and the happiness and the hope out of you. So you'll walk around defeated and scared and hiding somewhere. And if he can get the army of God to retreat and lay their weapon down and just sit in the corner and cover, then he's won. I don't plan to be a part of an army that's going to do that. Do you? Listen, there's things that hurt. There's things I don't understand. There's stuff that happens at just the right time that just makes you want to lay down and cry. Sometimes it's okay to cry and just let it out. Don't quit. You hear me? Now it's when you raise your right hand and say, I promise, Brian, I will never quit on God. Amen? Amen? It's not even me. It's not even the person beside you. It's not this building. We're talking about your eternity. When we get reminded every day, that comes quicker and quicker and quicker. We have to remember. I don't want to say this, but I just want you to understand we're going through something. Cheryl had a coworker, a dear, sweet Young lady, only 49 years old, worked for her for years from the moment she was in the bookstore at the college down in Moorhead where we lived. Worked with her side by side, spent a lot of time in her office talking. She was just, we were just standing there talking. She said, I think Sandy fits the Beatitudes 1 through 9, don't you? I said, she sure does. She was just the sweetest little Christian lady. And she passed away Thursday morning just unexpectedly. She had some kind of medical issue uh, that she had been finding out when she had put a surgery off uh, with a, a kidney tumor. And uh, because of work, she wanted to get the work out of the way first and then go do that. And uh, she passed away Thursday, just, just unexpectedly, you progressed very fast. And we got the word. And you stand there and you think, man, that's not supposed to happen. You know, a lot of you, you go through things and you think, man, that's, that's not it. And Satan, I'm not saying Satan takes these people from us. I believe in the Bible, it says it's a point of a man wants to die. After this, the judgment, Amen. God's in charge of that. But if Satan can use those things and twist that on us, Kristen, and say, now what do you think about God? Ha! Now what do you think about trusting him, Tom? Tom's got a great story. Tom shouldn't be here right now, should you, Tom? Amen? But I'm glad he is, aren't you? Tom's gone, persevered through a lot. Pat has gone through an awful lot. You're here. Janet, high-octane Janet Norman is right here. She's beat cancer. Pat's beat cancer. Many of you, we're still here. Can I go around this room and talk about physical and accidents and other things that have come along and we're here and we're thriving? It's when things don't go right and we hurt and we call up and we think, mm. you know what? That's when God is really saying, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Because for everything that goes wrong, there's the little Jack Nixon stories, right? Hey, we're not sure. We've got a little intestine issue here thinking we're maybe going to have to do something. He's not even a day old yet. We're going to have to operate and fix that, right? Remember that? Wasn't that long ago, just a month ago, a little over a month ago, two weeks, two months. See, I'm losing time again. I'm sorry. A little over less than three months ago, just like I said. <laughs> hey, Chelsea loves attention. Look at who's staring Mama right in the eyeball right now. She's holding him up right there. Didn't need a thing. God touched him and said, surgery, <laughs> I'll heal him. How about that? It bounces out. It rains on the just and the unjust, friend, yes. And I am not going to stand here and be the prosperity guy, Brian Williams, and say, everything's always going to be perfect and right. All you got to do is just claim it and it's done. I can't say that. I can tell you this. In the pouring rain when things aren't going right, you can look up and say, God help me, and he'll be right there. So we look at this list and we say, of all the ones I think I can handle, I'm not looking forward to that one (laughs) at all. Lori Bundy, I do not want persecution in my life. But I would be lying if I stood here and said, it won't happen. But if I do what God's called me to do, I can say, we need to be equipped to get through it, Kathy. Amen? Face it. Beat it. But it's with the help of God. 
And so we stand here today with this big list of things of being humble and, and being merciful and being a forgiver and being gentle and doing all the stuff that we've talked about and pursuing purity and being a peacemaker and all of that stuff. And you think, I, okay, that sounds really good, but man, I do not want to hold the checklist in my hand. How do I make it work? Jesus heard you. As a matter of fact, Jesus knew you were going to say that. So before this sermon was even done, he gave you a way to put it all wrapped up with a good bow in verse 13. 13 tells us this. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You believe that? If it's bright and high... Everybody's going to see it. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that may see your good works. Give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Can I help you with something? I believe that he put those, those verses there at the end of that sermon before he moves on to talk about other stuff. To tell you, Brandy Crisp, here's how you can live out all these blessed are they's. Be the salt of the earth. He told you that. Anybody ever tell you you're a salt of the earth kind of person, right? You know what that means? It doesn't mean you're ground up in the powder and love to crunch you. It means you bring out the good wherever you are. Anybody like salt on their food? Huh? Raise your hand. I didn't say can you have it. I said do you like it. <laughs> in this health conscious day and age we live in, it's a big difference. You like it. it yeah, it brings out the good. Take a big bite of whatever you like. Without salt, and then slap a snowstorm on that thing and stick it in your mouth. <laughs> There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Better have some water handy, too, if you do something like that, right? But he says, you're the salt of the earth. If you can pray, God, give me a heart to make where I am a better place, I believe you're falling right in line with the blessed are you. Amen? If you can help me to make my home a better place, man, I fail at that. I fail at that. All you got to do is be in the wrong mood. Yesterday, for whatever reason, my mood was kind of up and I know it's hard to believe, but it was up and down a little bit. And, and God loved Connor. I love him with all my heart. But he picks those moments to try to be that little fly. I just can't swat completely away. <laughs> this deal right here, it, it's really sore right here under the eye, the cheekbone thing right there. So every time we were out shopping yesterday, and every time I'd turn around, he had his finger right there. He goes, is that sore right there? I'm like, Ugh! <laughs> turn back around again. 20 minutes later, he'd move around again. And he'd put, put, and there, it seemed like every time I turned around, he would look at me like that. Going, hey, that sore? I'm like, it, you, you want one? No, I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Show you sore. But it got to the point where you're thinking, Ugh! and he's like, Dad, I just love you, but I'm bored. And I can't say it when I'm bored. And blah, blah, blah. He's all over the place. I'm like, I get it, son. I said, then be like a mature adult. And do what all the rest of these men around here are doing, waiting on everybody to come out of the dressing rooms. He goes, Dad, I don't want to do that. I'll fall asleep. I said, that might not be a bad thing. <laughs> Bring out the good. Bring out the good. Right? Can you do that? It's that simple. Through Jesus' help. If you are a bought by the blood Bible-believing Christian, you believe in Jesus 100%, then wherever you are, there's the ability for you to bring out the good. Encourage people. Love them. Listen to them. Tell them you're there on their side. Go and be for them when you need to be. That's the peacemaker in you. Amen? That's the other list of things. That's the forgiver. Be that person that can bring the good. Every time you grab a shaker of salt or you see the little Morton Salt girl or you think about something being plain like it is, remember, I am here to make this a better place. Do not say that in a way of conceit, but say that in a way of God has me here for a reason. Amen? Home, work, church, wherever you are. Bring out the good. Can you do that? Then he says, you're the light of the world. He says, you're there to show people the way. In those nine things that Jesus says, blessed are you if you do, there is lots of reasoning in there that can say, Ella, to us, let people know who you serve. Show them how to do that. Be that example. Just like a flashlight in a dark room. My grandpa Hobbs in Kentucky used to always have a flashlight Right by his bed. Now, he had electricity. And he had a light he could flip on. And he even had a switch on the wall. It wasn't just a drawstring. But Gordon, for some reason, he had a 38-pound metal flashlight 
with the bat signal end of it like that big to get up. And that was just so he could go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. And the bathroom was from here to the sound booth from his room. So you pretty much think he could get through there okay. But he picked up that thing. And, the cro- and you could tell him, when I called him Papa. When Papa got up, because that thing went... <laughs> And out he would walk. And that light, and it didn't matter where you were in the house. You saw that light shine around the house. And you'd think, oh, he's up, you know. But he didn't want to have to miss anything. He's like, I'm not falling down. <laughs> I am not falling. No, you're not. Birds started singing because they thought it was morning when that light came on. <laughs> out he would go. And he would go back to his room and he'd lay down. But he said, I am making sure I can see where I'm going. Do you get a little chill when you hear that? (laughs) I'm making sure I can see where I'm going. Not only should you make sure you can see how you're going, but there's somebody walking behind you making sure you got that light pointed in the right direction. Are you with me? They're making sure that you're showing the way. And he says, if you've got a light and you're the city on the hill, you're not going to want to hide it. You're not going to want to keep it hidden. You're going to let everybody know there's something different burning in you and you want them to follow you. Amen? And I'm following someone who's a whole lot bigger and better and better than I'll ever think about being. His name is Jesus. And so show him the way. He says, shine it before others so they may see your good works. But it doesn't stop there. It's not, oh, how wonderful you are. You're awesome. No, and give glory to your Father, which is in heaven. Amen? That's the one that gets the glory anyway. In all that list of things that he says, and all the things he tells us in that chapter and in that sermon, he's never saying you'll be happy if you just do what makes you happy. Do you see that in there anywhere? You'll be happy if you make somebody else happy. It doesn't say that. It's saying plug into me. We stand together, whatever they have for a closing song. I don't know your hearts. I don't know where you come from or your exact situation right now. But I do know that it doesn't matter even if you're, you're a Christian or not. This can still land in your lap and say, okay, I, I need to get better at a few things. But if I can just get better at bringing the good out and showing the way, I can do this. If I get better at trying to love people and meet them where they are and let them see where I'm going, this is doable. Amen? Your head's bowed and with your eyes closed just before we sing. Just let me ask you this one question. Whether you're here today and, you're, and you know Jesus or not, we all fall into this one category. God, use me. Make me bring out the good. Let me show the way even better to heaven on this earth for people. And just raise your hand just say, pray for me that I can do that. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Amen. Anybody else? I'm not keeping a list. I just want to pray. Amen. I just want to let you know that I'm praying for myself and for you. You'll continue to do that. That's going to make the world, make our country, make our community even better. Amen. But it's all about him. Glorify your father who is in heaven. Father, we love you. Every hand that was raised, and even if they weren't in our hearts, God, we know that we're always striving to do better. We're always striving to let the good in us be your good and so I pray today that we wouldn't get caught up in specifics as far as the list with that even though those are all there and we need to remember them specifically at times but it boils down to following your lead it boils down to serving you with all of our heart it boils down to just trying to make everything we do a better situation but we cannot do that without the Holy Spirit's guide we cannot do that without you And so I just pray today you'd forgive us where we failed you. Help us not fall back into any old habits that would keep us from doing these things. And help us press ahead and not quit. Persevere. Because a better day is coming. It's coming quicker than we think. And we want to be ready for that day. Pray in Jesus' name. And amen. While we sing, if you need to come and pray.